on 23rd August 2023, Wednesday. India had the rarest of rare honour of being the first nation to have landed on the moon's south pole during Chandrayaan-3 mission. With the successful soft landing by the Vikram lander, India now occupies a place of pride among an elite club of nations to have landed a spacecraft on the moon. Before the lead letter day of 23rd August 2023, only the United States, China and the former Soviet Union had achieved this feat. Chandrayaan-3 sent its first message upon landing on the lunar surface after over a month of journey from the Earth and said, India, I reached my destination and you too. Then the Pragyan rover rolled over from the lander and walked on the moon. What a wonderful, wonderful moment that was. And I think no one can ever forget that moment. All of us, I think, witnessed history being made on 23rd of August 2023. The entire country, which had offered prayers at every religious shrine, erupted into a collective celebration as the precise moment when Chandrayaan landed at the south pole of the moon. It's been the result of decades of grit, courage and conviction that reiterates our country's scientific temper. It's indeed, undoubtedly, India's proud moment. The entire country, as you saw, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, felt this was such a, such a special day. But you know, the South Indian today takes more pride, even as I take you through the several connections of South India to Chandrayaan-3 mission. First, it's about the soil. Man in Tamil, Mitti in Hindi. All Indians are very, very proud of our soil, who we are. We equate the soil and like the Prime Minister said, the soil with our mothers. Something which shall make every Indian proud of what we have achieved for decades to come. Namakkal district in Chennai has been supplying soil to the Indian Space Research Organization since 2012 for testing the Chandrayaan mission's capability. Professor S. Anbaragan, who is the Director of Geology Department of Periyar University, reiterated how, due to abundance of soil available in the Namakal area, they could supply the source to ISRO. He further added that following the success of Chandrayaan-1, about 50 tons of soil, similar to the kind of soil present on the lunar surface, was sent to ISRO. After undertaking several tests, scientists at ISRO confirmed that the soil from Namakal in Tamil Nadu indeed matches with the soil on the lunar surface. And you know what Mr. Anbaragan said? He said, we have been sending the soil to ISRO as per their requirement. They, ISRO scientists, have been performing tests on the soil supplied by us. Even if a Chandrayaan-4 mission comes up, we are geared to supply the soil for it. There are, of course, many, many names from the South India who made it their mission to see that India joins the August Club of being the only country in the subcontinent to have its presence in the South Pole or the Moon. Mail Sami Annadurai, dubbed as the Moon Man of India, led the Maiden Chandrayaan mission in 2008. M. Vanita led the Chandrayaan 2 mission in 2019. And M. Veera Muttuvel is heading the current Chandrayaan-3 mission. The spectacular success of Chandrayaan-3 is a result of years of sweat and blood and keeping up hope. Much like any milestone in our nation's history today, when we have become the only nation to have landed in the South Pole of the Moon, we should really understand the work which went on for years. Let me also read out all the tweets and all the reactions which are coming from across the world for our success 
due to Chandrayaan 3. Take a look. Tweets on your screen, uh, Mocha Stalin's tweet first up there, where he's praising the work uh, done by all of them who have really been at the forefront. That is Mail Sami, Anna Durai, P. Vanita, and of course, Muthuveli. Three of them, heroes today for the South. Minister of Kerala also praised and of course tweeted about the wonderful feat achieved by us by several important dignitaries. First was Mukha Stalin and that is Pinarai Vijayan. We shall of course be joined by two very important men who actually have contributed immensely to the Chandrayaan mission, to the moon mission, to the lunar mission as it were. First up, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor of being joined by a very important man, like I said, G. Madhavan Nair who is ex-chairperson of ISRO. Mr. Madhavan Nair, Namaskaram. How are you, sir? Namaste. I'm good. Thank and you. Is, uh, this is a show which is called The South Indian, sir. You know, at News 9 Live, we do special shows which only focus on the South of India. Of course, sir, it's a very, very important moment for all of us Indians. But I think the contribution of the South, today is the day when we can take a little bit pride also, Mr. Nair, what do you think? Uh, well, certainly it's a proud moment for the entire nation. And uh, it's just a coincidence that uh, there are several uh, laboratories in the southern part of India has contributed significantly for this uh, achievement. Uh, and also the many of the key players are from the uh, regions in, in the south. And uh, it's, I would say it's only a coincidence. It is not that uh, somebody has deliberately planned for it. But uh, the Indians can all be proud of what we have accomplished. Uh, it's the first time in the world that uh, a, a man-made spacecraft is landing on the southern polar region of the moon. And uh, again, uh, that too, the mission is accomplished uh, with textbook precision. Uh, landing on the designated spot at the uh, declared time, which was uh, calculated about uh, two months back. Uh, the journey of uh, nearly uh, 400,000 kilometers is a uh, really obvious one. And the last 30 minutes have been almost like a nightmare. But in spite of all those things, the, the efforts, the imagination, and the type of concepts what introduced by the uh, the team members of the Chandrayaan-3 has uh, really borne fruit and uh, it has been a remarkable mission. Entire operation for the last 30 right. minutes, though it was uh, yeah. very crowded, has been very precisely implemented by the team. Mr. Nair, you know, for the benefit of the viewers, you know, it is always, we should salute history. We should never forget our, you know, past when we achieve something today is what I would like to believe it is because of the collective effort, the grit, the courage. Is it right that, you know, Tumba, where we speak about in Kerala, is it right? Please correct me if I am wrong, because I do not go by Wikipedia ever, but by people like you who were there maybe to witness or as a young man. You know, was it started in a church, sir? Was there a scarcity of space to start that particular center? Uh, well, uh, Thumba was uh, taken for uh, scientific reasons hmm. uh, to be the first launch site in India. Hmm. Uh, as you are aware, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, yes. uh, who has uh, starred the movement uh, in the form of uh, society in Kospa, hmm. uh, and also with the international cooperation uh, from uh, Russia, America and Europe, has established the uh, launching of sounding rocket from the fishing village near Thumba. The main reason is the equatorial electrojet is passing over this region and it is an ideal spot for probing the atmosphere and ionosphere uh, and related studies due to the magnetic field and so on. So that's how it started. But uh, as you know, Kerala is a very, very crowded place. Uh, right. uh, 
uh, density of population is very high. And uh, the coastal village was hardly about uh, 200 acres or so. And it was not sufficient to have uh, large rockets accommodated within this space. Uh, the large rockets uh, needs a large safety zone. And, we, and not only that, if you want to have a launch of a satellite, it has to be in the eastern direction. So uh, the search for that has taken us to the Shiri Kota, the Sadish Savan uh, Space Center, where it's almost, uh, it's almost like an island, which is separated from the mainland by backwaters, and a huge area, which is uh, relatively less inhabited by the people. So that area was developed as our spaceport. And from the small beginning at Tumba, carrying uh, rockets and payloads in cycles and bullock cart, we have come a long way. The mammoth uh, GSLE Mark III vehicle, uh, the Bahubali, uh, the nickname which is going to it, has taken off uh, from uh, last month, uh, carrying the Chandrayaan-3 from Sri Kota. It's huh. a phenomenal growth right. as far as the Indian space program yes. is concerned. Yes. Leaders like Dr. Stanbai, Dr. Kalam, uh, Dr. Dawan, all these people have contributed to this uh, building of this great organization. Yes. Yes. Mr. Nair, you know, when you look back, you know, there are lots of, uh, you know, people. Yesterday was a time of euphoria. It's like the day of your wedding. It's only that the second and the third day it starts sinking in, as it were. You know, a lot of people are saying that the kind of support that the scientific community and particularly ISRO gets now, it is unparalleled, sir. I am not saying earlier you were not getting support. But don't you think now, of course, there is technological advancement. The budgets are better, although this is much less than most of the movies that are made you know, in our country, you know, the Chandrayaan 3, that's information, ladies and gentlemen, the budget is much less than, let us say, uh, 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 a mythological fantasy movies of the south of India. Yeah. So, I'm asking you that, do you get better support now? Is it everything coming together? Is it cogent now, Mr. Nair, which makes things easier? Uh, well, I think it has been a steady planned growth as far mm. as the Indian space program is concerned. Mm. Uh, last uh, five decades, it has seen that step-by-step uh, -step, uh, improvement uh, in the availability of space transport system. We started with uh, SLV-3, a small rocket launcher, and from there the PSLV, the, the GSLV and so on. The Earth observation satellite in the normal uh, spectral band and later the multispectral imaging laser, and also the radar imaging technology has been developed, the communication and the DTH, the telemedicine intelligence, like that. You know, there's been systematic progress and uh, ISRO was uh, practically utilizing all this technology development uh, for the benefit of the common man. The, the type of uh, programs what ISRO has uh, implemented for mm. the, uh, improving the quality of life of the country is uh, unparalleled. That's one of the reasons the governments have been fully supportive of this program. And all the prime ministers, starting from Pandit Jawaharlal Tehruji onwards, have been uh, in the forefront in supporting the space endeavor. And of course, in the last uh, nine years, we have seen that Modi ji has taken personal interest yes. to ensure the, the programs are given a big push. And he has cleared the our program for the man, un, manned mission uh, to the around the earth and back and also the advanced missions uh, for the other planets as well. All right. So there is a good support from the government as far well as the activities are concerned today. Yeah. But more than that, it is a sheer commitment and the efforts by the ISRO team which uh, makes all this happen. Uh, Mr. Nair, you know, Chandrayaan 2 faced some challenges, you know. Uh, and, and yesterday we heard you on, on our uh, platform about how the last 20 minutes or, you know, when the countdown began, it is really nerve wracking. So, uh, uh, what is this? What, because, you know, I, no one is apportioning blame. That team, what it did, it's because of that team that we are here today. But would you like to elaborate a little on how this particular team of Chandrayaan 3 uh, you know, got over or actually, you know, uh, uh, tried to lick all the problems which was faced by Chandrayaan 2, sir. What was that special thing? 
Uh, well, I think uh, in space uh, endeavors, failures do take place. Yes. And uh, one has to be very cautious. Uh, but ISRO has got a culture of learning from the failures and springing back to success as quickly as possible. The, the type of tenacity with which they tackle the issues is uh, remarkable. In fact, in Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3 phase also, so the same thing has happened. The teams have gone into threadbare on the design of the, the capsule, the Chandrayaan 2, and uh, its operations, and uh, how we descended up to two kilometers above the surface of the moon. And later, of course, the information available is bigger, but they have uh, visualized all possible scenarios which can contribute to such a catastrophe. And then corrective actions were worked out based on that. These corrective actions involved uh, a virtually a redesign of the craft itself. Right. The propulsion modules have been modified and improved. Its uh, legs have been strengthened. The computers have been made powerful. Redundancies are provided. Number of sensors have been added and the new algorithm have been developed. And also, the you have seen the last uh, few seconds, it is virtually hovering over the surface of the moon. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, this is something, a unique feature, which uh, no other country has done in the past. So that way, I think uh, ISRO has uh, learned from the mistakes or the probable cause of error, which has occurred in the Chandrayaan 2, and uh, taken all corrective actions. More than that, they have carried out a large number of simulations uh, in the ground, uh, 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 stretching the limits of operation and ensured that the system <clears throat> will function normally within conceivable limits of error. So there's a confidence with which uh, Chairman Somanath has uh, announced that we will land on the moon on a particular time. And uh, we did so, and my uh, really, the, uh, I appreciate the, 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 the hard work behind it and more than uh, three years of day and night work by thousands of people on this job. Thank you so much, Mr. Madhavan Nair. It was such a privilege to be speaking to you. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.